The attack at Sevastopol, where it is now said, Kiev says the Black Sea Fleet commander uh, was killed in that attack. What do you make of that? And what about its significance? How do you weigh it up? It's extraordinary. Um, it, you, out online, you always have to be careful. You can see on Twitter and YouTube some some footage of the missile strike uh, literally uh, descending uh, onto the headquarters and all the Russian people standing around like, huh, what just happened? So this is a big deal. They just uh, they uh, killed. Uh, uh, Russians haven't said anything, but they haven't denied it. Admiral Viktor Sokolov, which is a, a, a very, very uh, se serious senior commander. Uh, they estimate uh, 30, 30 plus of his officers. So it's not just him, but it's all, it's much of his staff. And then a lot of other people uh, that perished. But I think even more importantly, uh, the, a lot of the populations, a lot of the population area saw this big, big, big explosion and smoke What's going on here? This shakes a already snake-bitten mission for Russia in the Black Sea, which originally, when this all started, they thought it would be their pond. So there was a moral gain, if you like, from that from that attack on that Sebastopol stronghold, and with uh, with the commander said to have been killed and many of his, of his of his officers. Would you imagine a significant disruption to the chain of command and the efficacy of the the Russian naval machine? Well, um, well, certainly uh, with Sokolov uh, dead, um, um, it will be uh, regionally disruptive. Obviously, they have uh, naval headquarters uh, and the general staff and all of that. But for the fight in the Black Sea and, and, and overall Ukraine, Crimea, it's huge. I mean, I mean, the mission, I said, is, is snake bitten. Look what's happened in the Black Sea. Well, the Russians thumped their chests and all that. But they had early in the war their Moskva, their, their va uh, vaunted battle cruisers sunk. They just had ships sunk recently, including a major um, landing ship and submarine. Um, um, so there is a lot that's not gone well for the Russians uh, in Crimea, it looks like that the Ukrainians are working this strategy of isolating as best they can Crimea um, as they continue their grind out their counteroffensive in the Zaporizhia area on the mainland. And we're just going to have to see what happens. This is a big deal. Oh, by the way, Sebastopol, where 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 the headquarters is, at, is a two time Russian Soviet hero city goes back in the history of the uh, of, um, of, um, of of several wars, including the Second World War and the Crimean War. So this is a big symbolic target, but it is also important for the whole region. All the uh, all our allies, the Turks are watching across across the Black Sea, uh, the grain and everything else that hold again, Strategic terrain, as we say in the military, is the Black Sea. And for the Russians, it is Crimea. And within Crimea, it's their basing out of uh, Sebastopol and that naval port. I'm keen to get your thoughts, Peter, on a particularly hideous aspect of, of Russian war. The UN have identified what they see as a systematic policy of torture being operated in different parts of the, of the, the Russian military operation. Now, I, as a as a layman, quite apart from as a human being, who just sees this this is revolting. But as a looking at it from a strategic or tactical point of view, I cannot see the possible advantage to Russia of such an approach. I think you are spot on, and uh, I think having this aired in a major way in the United Nations again is critical because you have a lot of nations, not in a substantial amount, that are either fence sitters or quietly in support of the uh, Russian invasion, though they don't want to be a part of it. And this diminishes them. I mean, how can you get behind a, a nation that after 19 months is acting every bit as brutish as it did on the first day of the war on the 24th of February last year. And this is, a, there's a disturbing consistency. There were uh, the atrocities uh, out um, near Kiev early on in Bucha and 
and the air pin and 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 then up in his zoom and and then body seen in um in uh, hair song so this isn't stopping this continues and nobody's seen the russians um talk about internally let's get a handle on this in in my military and your military and our allies we have had mistakes and and there have been you know the nastiness and horror of war uh, an, an atrocity, but our leadership will come down and crush that with an investigation. The Russians won't and have not do it. It discredits. They just, they just, uh, they just continue to block, obfuscate, lie, um, and uh, and and not even acknowledge the issue. And uh, it's documented, uh, and it isn't just war atrocities it's the we've all been reading about you know the de deportation of the children and five million ukrainians that have been um relocated in ukraine and another six million that are refugees and how about over ten thousand civilians dead or close to that uh documented uh and none of this would be happening if the russians had not invaded or 19 months continue the invasion, as I said, with the same viciousness that we saw in the first phase of the war. And it is a war, it's a gruesome war. And, um, and um, so good on the, uh, on the UN uh, working an investigation, but I, I, again, I believe that it, you've got, they've got to shake, shake the shoulders of a lot of those countries that, that are fence sitters and don't want to take a a moral position regarding the Russians and their grievous excesses yeah. in Ukraine. Uh,